So we're gonna do a day in the life video. I was just really loud. I immediately felt really embarrassed for being that loud. Um, <laughs> so day in the life video. Today, I haven't really got a lot planned. Um, it will just be kind of normal day. I hope it's not too boring for you. But the first step will be um, going to the dentist, which is a really big deal for all of us because it will be the first time leaving Miriam behind. Um, she's like six weeks now, five, five six weeks and i haven't been away from her yet and it's a lot for my husband as well because he's like how am i going to put three kids together um inshallah it will all be fine that is the way to say So I'm just heading into the EDC. I found this dentist a couple of um, years ago. They're in Sofia and they have been taking care of me and my kids for a while now. They're really lovely, so I'm excited to show you. So I asked if I can have a look around the clinic as well, because I, I arrived a little bit early. And the first room that they brought me to was the sterilization room. Sterilization machines are required in every dental practice in Jordan, but that's not to say that every dental clinic does use it. And very few in Jordan have specifically designed rooms for it. So the staff were quite excited to show me. And the European Dental Center has a number of other specialized rooms. There are so many different specialists at the EDC that you can get just about everything that you want done there. The main things that they are known for are implants and veneers. And while I was there, there were actually two people having implants fitted and I got to see part of the process. They use a special machine that tests the implants to make sure that they have the highest stability possible. So this little machine is something that you don't find very often and it checks the magnetic field around the tooth. So while most dentists use x-rays to check that implants have been fitted correctly and that they are stable, this machine is an added security to make sure they're not gonna move. So this is the children's area and I'm familiar with it because Atam has had a lot of work done in here. And the dentist in here is, she's just, she's fantastic with children. She's like really explains what's going on and puts them at ease. So today I'm gonna have a, like a postpartum checkup. Um, Good morning. Hello. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Congratulations for the new baby. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you are healing well and good now. Yes. Yes. Thank Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So it has been how many weeks now? Five weeks. Five weeks. Because of all the changes that happen during pregnancy, you should have a postpartum dental checkup. And Dr. Iman is explaining to me here that the hormonal changes during pregnancy can cause inflammation, bleeding to the gums, and that's why my gums have been so sore lately. So ready for the checkup? Yes. Give me notes, please. So during my checkup, they found that I have um, like a superficial cavity, and maybe next time I will come back and do that. But it was good that I came in for a checkup so that we could find that. And they just gave me this um, this special treatment as well, where they polished, they um, they scaled, and then they polished um, using blueberry flavored like abrasive stuff. The more polished your teeth are the less chance stains have of getting stuck onto your teeth. So next we're doing... Um... <laughs> I didn't see it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we look like we're starting a band or something. <laughs> and finally, I had laser disinfection, which I've never had before, but it removes about 90% of the bacteria in your mouth. Laser is very uh, powerful because people used to use antibiotics. Antibiotics are not good oh. because they they are harmful to our kidney, to our liver. Here Dr. Kiswani is explaining to me that this minimizes the use of antibiotics. This is a localized non-chemical alternative that is more effective at avoiding and getting rid of infections. Only very few clinics in Jordan do this. Okay, okay. So, Bye -bye. Thank you so, much. so I just finished at the dentist. My teeth are all clean and polished and now it's a bit late, it's about midday so maybe we will order lunch and then later I'll take the boys to the park and to pick up some vegetables and things. There's a special way that women in Jordan cross the road 
um, and I wasn't brave enough to film myself doing it. But basically, when, I haven't seen men do this, when a woman wants to cross the road, she will hold out her hand up in the air, make them stop, and she will just walk across the road. But you soon learn that you have to, you have to make the traffic stop or they won't stop for you. So driving past um, a really fancy coffee shop and I realized that my teeth are in pretty good order. I should treat myself to a frappuccino. لا بدي اثنين مع كريمة و إذا ممكن في عندكم ملك شيك صح؟ يعني ملك في كروكان في أوريو في شوكليت بيستاشيو كروكان I feel so extra with all of my um, my drinks walking out um, for the ballet so basically you have valet service in Jordan, which I don't think that we even have in the UK. So, someone will take your car for you. You'll like leave it with them in the street. And, um, and then they'll go and park it for you somewhere. But I, the reason why I'm mentioning it, because it's become really normal to me. But the other day, my friend was meeting me in the cafe and she's new to this. Like she's new to Jordan. And, she was saying like, where am I gonna park? And I was like, leave it with the valet. And she's like, but I don't know the valet. And I'm like, yeah, but it's his job. Like, just like leave the keys with him and he will park it for you. And she's like, uh, but I forgot that that's not something normal, that that's something kind of odd. And it feels so extra. You came down to say hello to me. <laughs> Do you wanna try and hold it? It's a bit heavy though, to be honest. Who's got heavy? Which one is mine? Um, yours and Hashim's are the small ones. I got you crocan flavor. Are you wearing your pajamas inside out, back to front? <laughs> Hashim, what's wrong? Miriam. Oh, my husband called me on the way back and he was like, the boys want shawarma. The boys want shawarma. <laughs> so we ordered shawarma. So in Jordanian homes, the first thing you do when you get home is you change into your pajamas. See, <laughs> someone didn't change out with their pajamas today. And now we're gonna, and someone didn't even get dressed. <laughs> Yalla, should we eat? Yeah. Shawarma? The best shawarma in the world. Okay, that's what it says in Arabic. And yet, it's contested as to whether or not it's actually shawarma. Here is tahini sauce. If you have chicken shawarma, then you will have um, garlic sauce with it. Uh, Mom. No, you have to run. You have to run, you and your son. Go to your house, guys, okay? I'm Are you okay? So we got to the park and it's way too hot. And the boys wanted to go to the children's museum instead. So I'll show you around there instead. Can you give the tickets to the man? Nice. We've got this book, haven't we? This one's the Arabic one. The Children's Museum is this fantastic non-profit educational centre in Dabouk, in Amman, and it is just full of interactive exhibits. It's our favourite place to no, go on a hot so day because it's got this huge indoor space that's got AC. Newspaper? <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. This is how the We got back from the children's museum, didn't we? And then I promised you that I would take you to the shop if you ate your shawarma. So now we're going back out. <laughs> Something I love about our man is that you can walk through a residential area and you'll find an olive grove. Right there in the middle. You see the lady that owns the place. You see her out there planting things and tending to her olives. When it's hot like it has been lately, it's been like 35 degrees during the day um, and it's really hot at night too. It's really hard to know what to do with the kids to keep them entertained. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I have this. I have this. So obviously we went to the children's museum um, and then I pushed it until it was like 6.30 or something to take them for a walk because like they need to get rid of that energy. 
But by that point, I was absolutely exhausted and couldn't manage anything else, not even to make an outro for the video. So that's my video for today. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next week, inshallah.